Hi everybody and welcome back to my War Games Hobby Channel. I'm at the club tonight and I'm playing Steve and we're having a game of Lion Rampant. Let me just show you the game. I'll talk through the setup, and then we'll play the game. And as usual, I'll do uh, highlights. I won't do the whole game, it takes too long. But um, when there's something interesting to tell you or to show you a bit of the action, I'll start the video and I'll edit it down to a reasonable length. So, let's uh, have a look at the table first. Right, so here's the table. You can see before we put any troops on it, that's, that's the table. And you can see there's a little village in the middle of the table. And uh, Steve's gonna try and defend that village and I've got to try and burn it down. In fact, it's from page 149 in the Lion Rampant book. And it's scenario, scenario eight, and it's called Sausages with Mustard. Now, right. Yeah, so you can see now we've, uh, we've deployed. I'm coming on with my Normans on the left there and Steve is coming with his uh, Anglo-Saxons on the right, but he's got a, a unit in, in the village. Um, oh, hello, Steve. Sorry, I haven't introduced you. Steve's my opponent tonight. Right, so, as I, as I was saying, he's got a unit in the village of heavy infantry, because in the scenario, you're allowed to have four points in the village. The rest of his army, the other 20 points, are coming on over here. We diced to see which side we'd come on, and that's, that's where we ended up. Uh, now, let me do my... Oh, no, let me just tell you about what the scenario involves. There's a, there's a village there of four buildings, and they're exactly in the centre of the table, and I've got to try and burn and pillage that village. If I, if I burn all four buildings down, I've won the game. In fact, if I burn three out of the four down, I've won the game. Steve's got to stop me from burning the village down. And um, if, he, if I only burn down one, he's won the game. So, you know, it's really about him defending and me attacking, which is perfect for Anglo-Saxons' defence and uh, perfect for Normans who are a bit aggressive. Let's do my army first. I've got uh, three units of uh, elite cavalry. One, two, three. My leader is in the middle here with that unit. I've got a unit of crossbowmen. And in that village, in that wood over there, I've got a unit of bow arm skirmishers. Uh, as I mentioned, Steve's got a unit of heavy infantry in the village and over here he's got two units of heavy infantry but they've been upgraded to veteran so they're good in attack as well as defence. Then he's got two units of light infantry which are over here and a, a unit of skirmish bowmen. Um, we're going to dice to see who starts, although I think uh, in most of the scenarios it says the, the attacker starts, but I don't want to gain any, any advantage. We're going, to, we're going to dice to see who starts, and then um, it's really a case of who gets to the village first. Now, you could argue that, that I've got three units of cavalry, so I should get there quicker than he can, but the problem is um, moving knights in these rules can be a bit difficult because they only move on seven plus they haven't been upgraded they're exactly as they are in the book and whenever I play knights I tend to not move very much initially um, so I'm hoping that I'll roll well with them because if they stand there and let all the work being done by the poor crossbowmen we're not going to do very well and although he's for he's, he's the same distance away although he's slower um, he will be able to move his troops a little bit easier than me now the other problem I've got is once I get close to his uh, troops with my cavalry, I'll end up um, doing a wild charge if I'm not careful. So it's gonna be very interesting, very tactical. I'm gonna try and uh, go around the flanks maybe, but there we are, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, so we're gonna roll to see who starts. What did you roll? A one, I think it'll be me then. Hold on, let me just get my dice. Yeah, I rolled a six, so I'm going to start. So I'll do the first move, and then I'll come back and let you know what's, uh, what's happening. One thing I didn't mention, uh, to set fire to the buildings, I, can, I have to do an act to activate the unit. If they're touching the building, I can try and set fire to it. And I've got to roll eight plus to do that if I'm a, over half strength. If I'm half strength or below, it's nine plus to set fire to the building. Once it's set fire, it can't be put out. So I've just got to hope that when I get there, um, that I do manage to do that. 
Uh, the other thing is we've got one uh, re-roll per move if any unit's within 12 inches of, of the leader. One additional thing we're doing tonight, we're just going to try this out, is that because we found in a few games uh, you roll really badly, like I did the last game I played, I rolled two ones with a, a, f a four-man cavalry unit, knights, and they, they, they run off the field. Um, and we're, we're going to tonight just try to use an additional uh, house rule where you can re-roll one failed courage test only once per game so it'll only stop it happening once if you do it two or three times you're going to be in deep trouble but once in the game we can elect to re-roll one of the courage tests and that's just the one just to see how it goes so uh, right I'm just going to move and I'll let you know uh, how I get on now I told you that I was a bit concerned that my knights might be hard to move but blow me I managed to move them all uh, so the whole of my army's managed to move forward, which is a good start. Uh, Steve is starting to move his troops over here. But what he did in the first thing he did was in the middle of the village, um, he's formed shield wall. You can see I put a little marker there. So that's a very nice defensive position he's got there. Um, it doesn't stop me getting near the, uh, the buildings, but um, they're a bit of a threat there at the moment. So if I try and charge them, Maybe I'll ignore them. I think basically if he tried to come out there and be a bit more aggressive, it would be a big, big mistake. He's really best just forming shield wall and hoping that his, the rest of his army get there to, to help him. They do eight inches, yeah, and they don't get slowed by the wood. Yeah, Steve's quite easy to move. All of his troops move on five plus when you roll two dice, so he shouldn't have any trouble. Let's move that tree a little bit if you like. Shouldn't have any trouble moving his, um, his troops up. I say with mine, my skirmishers move on five plus, which are over there. My uh, uh, crossbowmen move on six plus, and the rest of my cavalry, the knights, move on seven plus. So I'm more likely to fail a move than he is. Uh, but having said that, you never know with these rules. You never know with these games. So he's moving his next unit, the veterans, yeah. Of course, the thing with the veterans are. Yeah, that's all right. They can do a six-inch move. The thing about the veterans is, of course, they can't form shield wall because they're sort of armed with uh, not just spear. They're armed with two-handed weapons, swords, axes, and that sort of thing. So they're, they're better off attacking. They're a sort of more aggressive unit. Um, he can't. The only unit he has, or he's got three units that can form shield wall. The one in the village it's already has done, and the two light infantry units that he's bringing up. In behind there, which have got which are all armed with spears, so they can form shield wall. So there we are. He's going to continue moving. I'll report back later when there's more to tell you. Or oh, the other thing was uh, the 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 field, which has only got a very very low hedge around it, and this little uh, pig pig area. It doesn't slow me down at all. It, it, this this would just be road. They'd ride through that if they wanted to, and and that's that's really just nothing so there's nothing that will slow slow me down i made that clear before we started whichever side i came on so there we go he's moving his next unit yeah so they can move as well i didn't think he'd have any trouble moving his army he'd be unlucky to he's got one re-roll anyway um but he'd be unlucky not to be able to move something i'm a little bit more uh, unsure about mine Right, so I've started, I, I managed to move all my troops again. This unit did fail, but I got a re-roll and they did move up. I'm making sure I stay uh, out of charge range of, of these guys. I don't want to charge a shield wall yet. Yeah, so what I want to try and do is weaken him with my crossbows first before I go in. Um, I haven't got too long to do that though, if his, if his army keeps advancing the way that it is. Yeah, the, the, the problem I have is if I go to, for these units to try and set fire to th this barn or this building here, um, as soon as I'm within charge room, move off him, I've got to charge him. And he's in a wall of spears, which means his armour goes up from three to four. And, and they, they attack on four in defence. So they're quite a strong unit sandwiched between those two buildings. So I'm holding back... Um, for now, in the hope that my crossbows will um, activate and be able to shoot them. They are within 12 inches now, so I can shoot at him. 
Well, I could have shot at him at more than that, but it would have only been hitting on five, six. I want to hit on four, five, six, so I needed to be within 12 inches, and I'm just within 12 inches there. So we'll see what uh, happens when I roll next time. I really do need to damage them quickly because you can see these, these Saxons are moving up pretty damn quick. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game, this. I think that uh, setting fire to all four buildings is going to be hard. I need at least three to win and two for a draw. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, again, Steve's not failed to move any of his troops, so uh, they're coming along quite speedily there. I don't think I can hang back, you know, here. I've got to try and set fire to those buildings. I'm going to have to send my knights forward, and next move, one of them's going to have to try and charge him. But, uh, well, they, they might both have to. We'll have to see how it goes, but it's my turn anyway. Right, I, I went to activate my crossbowmen, and the first time I activated them, they failed, but I got a re-roll, because my leader is near nearby, and they did manage to activate this time, thank goodness. So I'm rolling 12 dice, but because he's in shield wall, I'm hitting on fours for my crossbows, because that's what they hit at the range they're at. So I rolled a dice to see how many I get. I'll take out ones that didn't score a four so I've got seven hits not enough to do two so it's one casualty right. and now you have to do a, a, a courage test nine. no problem with that is it no. Steve scored a nine there so he's got no problem with that at all so now I've got to activate the rest of my units I just thought I'd let you see that so I've managed to get the first casualty but it's not enough to for him for his courage to be affected so the, the bad news for me is that the first time I tried to activate one of my three units of knights, they failed. And I've already used my uh, re-roll, so the rest of my army stays where it is. Now this is the problem I'm going to have with the Normans. Unless I can activate units, the crossbowmen activate on 7 plus to fire, and the knights 7 plus to move. So it's really going to be difficult for me to... Um, get the whole army to move, whereas Steve's not having that same problem. Right, so it's Steve's go. The problem is, if I go and um, set fire to the buildings, I mean, that is fine, but he's going to be in range with his, his uh, skirmishes in a minute. Um, and of course, if I get next to that building, I'll be charging anyway. So I'm not going to have much chance to set fire to it because the first thing I've got to do to activate to see whether I do a wild charge or not so I can't set fire to the building anyway so that's going to be very interesting or I just attack him anyway and try and push him back before I set fire to the buildings so that's the dilemma I've got okay so what I what I feared would happen is has happened I've managed to activate this unit to go into that building to set fire to it I'm standing right next to it now so next move I will be able to activate to see if I can set fire to it. But before I do that, I have to activate it for a wild charge. I'm hoping that I fail, <laughs> then I can try and set light to the building. But if I don't fail, then um, they're going to have to charge. The other problem I've got is that I then failed to charge this unit, and then it failed a second time. So the rest of my army has stood there, my crossbows haven't been out of fire. Um, and this is going to be my problem. I've got too many units that are hard to activate. Crossbowmen and uh, fire at 7 plus and the cavalry, of course, move, or the knights, sorry, uh, move at 7 plus as well. So this is where I'm going to have a problem. I'm just going to hope that my luck changes in a minute and I start activating some of my troops. Otherwise, he's going to um, run rings around me. Right, although actually when he gets nearer, I will be activating to wild charge, but I would much rather get near those buildings to set them on fire. But anyway, it's Steve's go again, and uh, we'll see what he does. Steve moves his light infantry. You see his skirmishes here, he's moved them up. They are now in range of both my knights and my skirmishes. So when it's my turn, he can't fire this turn because he did a full move. He, he wasn't near enough to do a skirmish move and fire. But now he is in range, so he'll be shooting me in the next turn and I'll, I'll be doing a wild charge on him with my cavalry. I've got no option. And, and he'll try and run away, no doubt. Right, it's my turn. I thought I'd let you witness it and see how well I go. Now I've got two, cav two knight units 
the, these are within charge range of that unit and that unit, so I can elect to charge either of them. And this one is, <coughs> is within charge range of... Oh, it's not, actually. It's 10 inches. He's just outside charge range, so I don't have to charge with those. I thought they were in, but they're not. Um, so I'm going to have to move them. But the first thing I have to do, I have to roll for this unit first because it's a wild charge. And I'll roll charge on 5 plus. Well, I rolled 10, so it's not a problem. I'm electing to charge this unit here, which is just within range. Yeah, I didn't want to charge the shield wall, so I go in here instead. No, I should have been. I should. I would have been able. To... You you should have hung back a little bit more there to stop me charging no, you. Cool. I could have gone in the shield wall with them lights, couldn't I? You could have done last time, yeah. What? So I've so hit you there. Done, as soon as I stopped the move, I should have rolled to see if I went in the shield wall. No, you can't move and roll for shield wall as well. It takes a whole move to go into shield wall. Oh, right. So you either needed to stay back there and go into shield wall or move up, but not within 10 inches of me. Yeah, you moved right. up within 10 inches. Yeah. You could have stopped another inch behind, and, I made that and then I up, couldn't mate. have charged you. Well, I still might survive it. So. You still might survive it, because you still got uh, your light infantry. Right, yeah, your light infantry. Are they six? They've got an armor of two, but yeah. they've got... Um, Attack of six, isn't it? But they, they've got a defence value. In other words, when they fight me, they hit on fours. So it's, uh, it's, it, they may be OK. Wait a oh, yes, that's right. So I'm, I'll do mine first. No, I'm charging you. I'm hitting on threes. Let's just see how I get on. So I'll take out the ones and twos. Now I've got ten hits there. Right. Which is bad news for you because it's five figures. So I'll just oh, remove right. those. Okay. But now you fight back and you fight back with 12 dice. So take out the ones, twos, and threes. That's it. How many, did, 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 how many did you roll there? I thought 12, didn't I? Well, I, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm 9, 10, 11. Oh, I missed one. Roll one more. I must have miscounted. I'm being good to you here. Not that it matters, because you've still got two... Oh. I missed, right. But you've got eight hits. Yes. Which is two figures off me. Which means that we both got to do a courage test. Take my two figures off. So I'll roll mine first, if you like. Okay. I hope I don't do like I did do last week and roll two <laughs> ones. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I oh, cannot good. believe. Alex, it's good to be here. However, before we started the game, we agreed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really funny. <laughs> before we started the game, we agreed that we would re-roll once <laughs> per game a failed courage to, test. Now, so I'm going to do it now. Absolutely. What do you mean? Do I have to do it now? Oh, that's, that's better. So they're fine. <laughs> now you roll your two dice. See what you get. You roll ten. That's good. You've lost five figures. So you're down to um, five. And your light infantry have got a courage of four. So they're okay. They've survived. But you lost more than me. So it's you that have to go back half a move, which is four inches. Is it four? So they have to go... They're, no, oh, no they're, it's eight, isn't it? So it is They four. normally move at eight, yeah. so you've got to go back four inches, and you go straight back here, yeah. yeah. So lucky we agreed that uh, that um, house rule, where you, you re-roll uh -huh. one failed you courage test. Lucky, However, I can't do it again. That's my re-roll of a courage That's test mulligan, used up. That's your mulligan, yeah? I can't believe I do that. I keep doing it with two ones, don't it's I? Great to see it, give you a quick update because um, a bit's happened. As you know, we, we both lost casualties here, uh, and I re rolled my failed courage test and managed to stay there. And Steve went back, 
But he's managed to form shield wall now with his survivors, so that's a good thing to do. Uh, in here, his, his uh, heavy infantry had to fall back because my crossbows opened fire on him. And he lost another figure and he did a bad test, so he went back, but he's now recovered those, so they're standing there a bit happier. His skirmishers here opened fire and um, they didn't do any damage at all to my knights because she's only got three men, she only rolled six dice, she only got one hit. He's now moved his light infantry up round here. He's just about to move his other two units. So things are looking a bit better. I've managed also to bring my leader a bit nearer. Right, it's my turn. I've just uh, managed to activate my knights here for a wild charge. I'm just about to roll. I'm hitting on fours. I'm hitting on threes. Thank you, Graham. I'll take out the ones that didn't hit. Nope, Not take, take out. out the misses. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> I've got eight hits there, which is four more figures. Okay. So one, two. Oh no, sorry, they've got... Um, they uh, shield wall. They're shield wall. So I've only got two more figures there because they have got a, an armour of three rather than two, which means I only managed to uh, kill two. So that, that shield wall really worked for you. However, the shield wall is now broken because you can't stay in shield wall if you've got less than six figures. Uh, but no, you hit back at me and you're hitting on fours. Yeah, take out the ones that haven't scored a hit. <laughs> Not take out the one, take out the misses, no, no. I've, I've stopped saying that now, I'm very You'll good. You'll be very careful, Alex. I know. <laughs> right, so you've got eight hits there, which is two more figures off me, which is bad news for me. Because that, that unit of knights effectively is now out of the game. It's not going to do much. And all it's done is taken out a unit of light infantry. We both have to do a courage test. Yeah. My courage test is eight. Uh, I've lost four figures. I'm down to four. But my courage is three anyway, so they're fine. You roll two dice to see what you get. Well, you rolled three. But you've lost five, so you're down to below zero, yeah. so they disappear, they've gone completely. They go off the table now. They go off the table, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they did what they wanted to do. Well, they have taken out four knights, they've actually done very well. Yeah. Um, I'd be happy with that, with a light infantry unit. They only cost three points. My unit, which costs six points, has only got two men left, and you've got the heavy infantry there backing it up. Right, it, it's my turn to try, I have to try and do another wild charge which is here. I have to charge his skirmishes because they're so close. Let's just roll to see what I get. Yeah, they got a seven, so they do go in. Now you can elect to try and run away. I will elect to try So and roll two dice. You need seven plus to be able to do it. Yes, I did. You did. Now, we're three inches away. They go back three inches. They go back four inches, which means you're only seven inches away from me, which means I will hit you, unfortunately. Did he evade then? Sorry. He did evade, he managed to, but I'm so close that I'm still going to hit him. Because I've got a 10 inch range, so I'm still going to hit you, so you're going to die horribly here. But you do get to shoot before you run away. Mm. Okay, so I'll put those there. Um, and you've rolled six dice, and you want <laughs> Five, you, well, you, only, you, only, you, you only hit on sixes, so you need lots of sixes here. One, two, two sixes. Not enough. No. Right, so now they are going to be in a bit of trouble because I've got to roll my dice to see what happens. I'm hitting on threes. Take out the ones and twos. Oh, not very good. I only got five hits. But they've only got an armour of one, so there is five losses, they're dead, yeah. And I didn't lose any. Well, actually, you do get to fight back. You do roll sixes again. Do I roll sixes? Yeah, if you roll six dice, you need sixes. It's unlikely you'll roll four, but you never know. No. No. Okay, so they've gone. Now I can do the rest of my moves. Oh, these, these are within. 
they're, they're within charge range as well, so they have to do a wild charge. Yeah, they go in. So they've charged through the pigsty. As I say, that wasn't there to... Um, I've lost one of my spears. Got a man with no hand. So they've charged in there. I said at the beginning of the game that the pigsty doesn't really count. They were just... They've got room to go around it anyway. They would charge, jump over it and charge through. The pigs will probably get out of the way a little bit though. Let's turn that around a little bit so you can see the dice tray. So I'm hitting on threes. Now these are your heavy infantry. I'll take out the, the missus. <laughs> Don't you dare. Right, so I've got Seven hits, you've got an armour of three. They're, they're, they're able to make uh, so you have lost two figures, that's two more. They've already lost two before, so they've lost four now. And um, you hit back on me, so you roll 12 dice, and you're hitting on fours, fives, and sixes. Steve's got his own dice tray, so I won't uh, move the camera. I've got three sixes. You've four, got one, two, three, five. four, five. Yeah, five hits there. So it is a figure. I'll lose a figure. I'll take the man off that's just lost his spear. I'll have to glue that on again later. Right, we both have to do a test. My test is okay. I rolled a seven, so I'm fine. Your test is what? Six. So you, now you've lost that six. You've lost four men already so you're down to two and your leader is which is your leader figure Neville. yeah I'll give you that he's just within so they're on three now but you've got a courage of four so you are broken you have to go back I think you'll have to go back through this um, gap here battered. It's free, isn't battered. It? so while you're doing that I'm going to activate my crossbow unit to move which it does. So they're going to come up to here. They want to set fire to that that barn. So I need to move them up as quick as I can. And then I'm going to activate my skirmishes to open fire on your light infantry. It needs a seven to do that. I got that, so that's good. And now I'm going to hit on fives and sixes. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. One, two, three, four, oh, five. I was hoping it was going to be six. So it's five, five hits on you, so which is two figures, because they're not in shield wall. And then you have to do a courage test for that unit. Unless you roll badly, it should be okay. Don't do an Alec and roll a bit, two ones. Five. Six, seven, eight. Eight, yeah, that's fine. Could they go down? Yeah, they're, they're all right with that. They go down to six, but they're fine. They've got a courage of four, so they're fine. So that's uh, all my move done. It's up to you, Steve. A little bit of an update. Um, Steve recovered those in there. They've rallied. He moved up his light infantry here and attacked my skirmishes. I didn't manage to uh, evade. We had a melee, I lost three, he lost two, but we both failed our courage test, so we've both gone back battered. Um, and now he's charged my, with his heavy infantry, with his leader, he's charged my knights, and they've managed to counter charge. So we're just going to do that now. I thought you'd like to, uh, to see that. I'll just put my dice tray in there. So I'm hitting, fortunately, because I've managed to counter charge, I'm hitting on threes. But he has got an armour of three, so he's going to be difficult to kill. So I've only got... Two stone oh, Actually, I've done quite well there. So you've caused seven hits on me, but I've got an armour of four, so you only actually kill one figure. And I've got nine hits on you, and you've got an armour of three, so you lose three figures. Take him out. We'll leave your standard bearer in there. Oh, right, leave the take these three on the end there. That's yeah, it. That's so they're off. So we both have to do 
a courage test. I'm fine, I rolled 10, so that's not a problem for me. And you rolled 11. Well, although you've lost three, you're still down to eight, it's not a problem either. But because you lost more than me, it's you that has to go back. So you go back half a move, which is three inches. All right, and then your last move, Steve, is the unit over here. So you've got to now decide what you want to do with them. I thought you might. Four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so they will charge in. I'm going to try and counter charge, which I do manage to do, so we're going to meet about halfway. The trouble is, I've only got two figures there, which means that I'm only going to be rolling six dice. Because he's got an armor of three, I'm going to be lucky if I get one of his figures. So I'm rolling six dice, Steve, hitting on threes. I'm rolling 12. Yeah, I've managed to get four hits on you, which is one figure off you. And now you, you need fives and sixes. No, you're, again, you're veterans. You need fours, fives and sixes to score a hit. I fear that my night stays are numbered. That's it. How many hits did you get then? Uh, one, two, one, two, three, three four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so you wipe me out. They're gone. You'll be pleased to hear. So I'm going to try and do a wild charge here. I've got, I've got no option. Yes, they, they, they scored a five. So I'm going in here. That's the first one. All right, I'll just move my camera so you can watch the rolling again. So I'm hitting on threes. I'll take out the ones that didn't score a hit. Only one, I got 11 hits. Oh no, there's another two there. I've got 10 hits there. And as you've got an armor of three, you lose three figures. I've got a chance of killing your leader if I get two ones. I'm normally good at rolling ones when I don't want them, but uh, oh, nearly, nearly killed your leader then. Only three hits, so it's not enough to get a figure off. So you now have to do a courage test. Roll two dice. Right, so you rolled a three. You've lost six men from that unit, which means you're on minus three. Although your leader gives you one back, it's not enough. Oh, now, we, if you remember, at the beginning of the game, we agreed we do, you can re-roll one courage test that didn't work. So do it again. That's better, isn't it? Ten. Minus six for the losses you're taking and down to four. You get one back from your leader, five, so they're fine. They've survived. But you, you, because you took losses, you do have to fall back. So that saved you, that, uh, that house rule we made about uh, re-rolling one failed courage test. He just managed to survive. He, he failed his courage test, but we did a re-roll and he survived. He, he nearly did an Alex, yes. But they're not battered because they did, they did survive their um, courage test. Well, Steve's just managed to rally the unit here, but they can't do anything now. And then the other unit, which was just backed out from the, the, the hamlet, um, he rolled badly. And uh, because they'd lost seven men, it was never going to survive that really, was it? He needed to roll really high and he didn't. So that unit has gone away. So now he's still got the units that, uh, two units left to activate. He's going to activate the unit here, which are fine at the moment. No doubt he's going to charge me in the hope that he can do some damage. And he's got this unit here as well, which he's um, no doubt going to try and advance unless he falls short. Sheer wall. I don't think it will because he's got to start and stop me from burning the village down. And at the moment, I've got two units that are just about to do that. In fact, these are an inch away. I can't do it this time. 
they'll have to do that um, next move. But this, this unit is standing right next to that, so it'll try and burn that building if he doesn't try and attack me. So Steve, you, what do you want to do with this unit here? You are hitting on four, so you may whittle me down a bit more because you're veteran heavy infantry. Yeah, go for it. Well, have you rolled first? You might fail anyway. No, you didn't. You're in you go. I'm going to try and counter charge. Which I do manage to do. Which is not what you wanted, really. So, I'm hitting on threes, you're hitting on fours. Let's put my dice tray where we can see it. Right, so I need threes. Let's take out the ones that failed to score. No, that's a bad roll. Well, I got seven hits on you, I which is... nothing, really. Oh, you haven't? Oh, dear, OK. Well, you lose two. Mm. I've got a chance of killing your leader. No, I have done that. But you've now got to do a test with two dice. Ah, well, that's goodbye, Vienna, for that unit. He rolled a two, two ones, the thing that I normally do, Graham. He did two ones? He did. And he hasn't got that chance of re-rolling again. Um, what do you want to do with these? I know it's, uh, it's game over really, isn't it? Yeah, there's not much I can... I can't recover this now. No, you can't. Do you want to call it a day? Yeah, we'll call it a day. I think, I think it was... Um... Good game. Well, it started off OK. It started OK for me, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, and then... Because I failed to move a couple of times, but once those knights get within charge, they just keep charging. And I rolled better than you yeah. when, when I needed to. Yeah. Well, thanks for the game, Steve. Thanks for that. It's a nice scenario, though. In fact, I'll, um, I'll ask Graham to see what he thinks. Hold on a minute, let me see him plugged in. As Graham has just joined us to watch me win this game, and we've been, it's the first time we've done this scenario where you have to sort of burn the buildings. I didn't, I didn't burn the buildings, but if we'd carried on, that last unit would have gone and then I'd have had quite a long time to burn the building. So it, it, Steve's conceded because he's only got one unit left. But it's quite a nice scenario. What do you think, Graham? Um, yeah, I like the scenario and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it on Wednesday. I would say... Are you going to uh, try for the historical version of it, which I think was the French and the English in France? Maybe, yeah. Well, I've got the two factions, so... Got, yeah. I've got that. I would say um, cavalry burning down a building should be harder than infantry because they're on a horse, they've got a tender horse. A horse isn't going like, to like to be near flames. Yeah. So maybe there should be a modifier if you're going to, unless you have Huns, you know, they're used to carrying a torch or something. Well, the funny um, thing is, I was... Uh, I, I, I would say also, yeah, I mean, they're running around the courtyards and it's a tight little courtyard. So, so maybe I suppose you could argue some of them would dismount. It takes, it takes a turn to set fire to a building if you succeed in activating it. Yes, And indeed. I think, you know, to sort of keep the rules simple, they've just said as long as you're touching the building, you can attempt to activate it. But you activate it on an 8+, plus, so the chances are you might fail anyway. And the man's just standing there trying to light it, and it's not working. Yeah, but if you read the, the scenario rules, it says if you fail to activate to, to do it, it says your turn has not finished, yeah. and, and then you can do something else, whether that's a charge, or a shoot, or a move. Or if you wanted to, or stay there and try and activate to set fire to the building next move. Yeah, but then... So you could spend a lot of time sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, the key thing is, You've got to be next to it at the beginning of your uh, of the movement phase yeah. of the unit, so you can't move into it and set fire to it. You've got to be there. Yeah, you already. see the crossbows. You're still an inch away, so you would have had another move to get near to. And that then it would be the next turn after that before you could have done it. So, yeah. it'd be two so it turns does take away. time to do it. Yeah, I do wonder. Um, maybe four points in the middle seems a little light because you're coming in in a big wave, and Steve is you know he's on the far side. I do wonder maybe he could have had a few more points in there, maybe six or eight, because at the moment you can't put an elite unit in there at all. 
in theory, yeah, I'm going to get there quicker because I'm mounted. But, of course, it, to, to move knights is 7 plus anyway. In fact, and I did fail at one point to move the whole of my army. Yeah. So that could slow me down. But, but once I get within charge move, then I just keep charging the enemy anyway. Well, you ran him down, didn't you? So I watched it. So it might so. be better to have a game where one side isn't all mounted. Well, I had five, three, five units, three of which were mounted. Yeah. Steve had no mounted at all. Although they were easier to move on the, on the, on the I mean, cards, they still move a lot slower. So yeah, maybe the, the Normans had a bit of an advantage in the fact that they would always get. Very I quicker. think so. I think they're mounted. Also, I think I think there should be a disadvantage in trying to set fire to a building if you are mounted, unless you you get to a building, then you take a turn to dismount, and then you can do it. Yeah. But dismounting troops it might be a bit messy, really, for the for the rules, really. I think it would be. I, I think, think these are a simple set of rules, Graham. We don't want to get too complex. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, it looks I wouldn't nice. mind trying it again, but this time not have three. I mean, I, I decided I'd have my use my Normans, which I've never used in Line Rampant before, so I wanted to try them out. Did it say um, the, the size of, of the settlement in the middle, or did you just choose to have it one foot square? Well, uh, no, I, it, it said it had to be in the middle. It did suggest that the targets or the, 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 the buildings really four inches square, which is a bit small for the scale, so that the buildings are slightly bigger than they should have been. Um, but I don't think that makes any difference. Right, see you soon, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And oh, don't forget to, to share. Oh, I'll never say this on MI videos, but share, like, subscribe, subscribe, share, share with like minds. All that, because it, it does help the channel quite a bit. If you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you can do that. Right, guys, that's it. I'll record another one uh, at some point. I just thought this would make a nice little game. And it was. It was a bit one-sided in the end, but there we go. That's how it goes. It was one-sided last week when I played Graham. He absolutely creamed me, didn't you, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> I did indeed. Thanks, right. Alex. See you, guys.